So, coming to the next beat of your chapter, which is very interesting, how evolution is related to classification. Okay. Before going into the topic, let me narrate you a very interesting story. I hope you, every one of you once or twice have heard that name of the scientist who is very famous in the world of biology. Charles Darwin. Okay. Charles Darwin was sitting idly in his home when he once thought, why not let me see the world, the varied cultures, the varied heritage, the natural panoramic view, the scintillating plants, animals, everything. Let me have a trip. So he started a trip in a ship, HMS Beagle. And he reached near an island called Galapagos Island. You will be able to understand why I am telling you this incident of Charles Darwin. When he reached Galapagos Island, he observed a certain variety of birds, a species whose name was given as they were called finches. You have seen sparrow? Finches are very similar to that of sparrow by their structure. What was the most surprising fact for Mr. Darwin was these finches were having variety in that same small island. How or what type of variety? Variety was when he located some finches near the periphery of the island, he found its beak were very long and pointed. How he found the beak? Long and pointed pointed beaks were found. When he entered a bit into that island, he found smaller and very bigger, uh, like structure is very small, the length is small, but it can make its mouth wide open as compared to that of the finches who were at the periphery. When he entered a bit more, he found very small beaks, very less openable categories and they were found on the top of the trees. What Darwin concluded is, when the finches were around the periphery, it needs long and pointed beak to take out fishes from that of the ocean or the sea. When it came to the middle, it can feed upon the fruits. So for feeding upon fruits, it need not need pointed beak. It can have a small beak and it can have a wide opening categorization so that the potential of being wide opening can help them to engulf the fruit. And when it entered a much enter into the island, what Darwin saw is small and very small opening. Why? Because they were feeding upon insects. So what I can conclude from here is, upon the presence of the finches as per their location, the beaks were different. So, Charles Darwin became the father of evolution. What he became? He became the father of evolution. Now, how classification is related to evolution? As I have told you one incident, that as per the location of the finches, the type of the bigs were varied. Similarly, with time moving on, because time is not static, it's always going around, round and round. With advancing time, the species which we can see around us are also developing as per their requirement. Why the beaks were different? The beaks were different because it feeded upon different organisms. Nevertheless, we can conclude that feeding is one of the very important characteristics that define your type of the morphological features that you are going to exhibit. Understood? So, the most important part that you are going to learn is how these evolutionary structures are related to classification. Let me tell you, with advancement of time, we need to develop ourselves. Why? Because every day, the surroundings of ours are changing. So, on the basis of this evolutionary characteristics, animals were categorized into two parts by Mr. Or Charles Darwin. He wrote a book called Origin of Species. 
In the year 1859, he wrote a book called Origin of Species where he made all his observations into a tabulated form. Now what happened was, so on that basis of evolution, animals were categorized into two parts. Okay, the first part was primitive or lower organisms, advanced or higher organisms. Though these two terms are very misleading, they are wrong, they are erroneous. Why they are erroneous? Because you cannot say a very species is primitive. You cannot say a very species is advanced. What word that has been accepted by the world of scientists is organisms can be young as well as old. I hope you have understood the point. Old are primitive organisms and young are advanced organisms. And it is a general conclusion that we can draw is older organisms have simple structures. Older organisms were not that developed, whereas younger organisms are much advanced in their structures. So, we are coming to the end of the second beat, so you can understand with the passage of time moving on. As we are going towards the more advanced features, we are getting developed. And evolution is always progressive. What is it? It is always Progressive means always from low to high is the motive of evolution, means there will be development. It has been predicted by scientists that in the upcoming years, we human beings are going to get developed further. Our hairs will be very less, the ear pina will be absent. So, aren't you finding differences? Definitely yes. So that means with the passage of time, we are evolving, evolving into being a better species. So with this, we can conclude that classification is very much interested as well as interwinged with that of evolution by the process that we have older organisms or primitive organisms or we have the younger organisms or advanced organisms with complex and complicated structures. Clear?